up, what's up, what's up mga Chimeko? It's uh, February 14, so I want to greet you a happy, happy Valentine's Day, no? Maligayang araw ng mga puso, lalo na sa mga nagmamahal at minamahal, no? Congratulations sa inyo. Happy Valentine's rin sa mga martir, no? Na nagmamahal kahit hindi minamahal pabalik, no? Or umaasa lang. At eh, syempre, happy Valentine's sa mga nagmamahal sa pamilya, sa kaibigan, sa pag-aaral, sa career, sa trabaho, o kung ano man. No? Happy, happy Valentine's Day. Hindi lang naman para sa mga uh, inner relationship status ang Valentine's Day. So, pwede din siya sa mga, tulad natin, no? magkakachimik, no? mahal mo ang chemistry. So, let's spend our Valentine's Day learning. No? Yan. So, last time, we've already talked about a lot, a lot about gases. So, we're done with it. No? As I've mentioned last time in the video, the Graham's Law of Effusion would be the last discussion with regards to gas. No? The things that we cannot see. But eventually, no, uh, we will get deeper. No? If, if gases are small enough that we cannot see, we will try to dive deeper no? in the world that cannot be seen by naked eye. No? In the microscopic world. Or, if you might want to sound cooler no, to the quantum world. So, ladies and gentlemen, the quantum numbers. But before we begin, no, as usual, I'd like to congratulate uh, you and Kachimik Jello, Kachimik Irma, Kachimik Lives, and Kachimik Marian for surviving the first task or first challenge of So Alive. No? You survived. Uh, the second one no, was a bit easy. No? Uh, that's why so gave no another task no yet a difficult one that you will not be able to solve without a background knowledge of the particular topic that is to be discussed today so the challenge is after crawling down the hole no of the tiny orifice that you've found yourself in you know, in a hole that somebody of the or someone from the kachimek have uh, notice, no, naka, ano kayo doon with computation of what the speed should be and with the proper execution, uh, you find y- yourself no, in front of a door that could save you because eventually no, may mga lalabas na zombie or yeah, para realistic mga, ano, mga hyena, no, very hungry hyena or tigers, no, monsters or wild animals. And the only uh, thing you know, that will save you is this door. But uh, unfortunately, it's locked. No? And to be able to unlock it, you have to input values from 0 to 9, tapos may 1 half and negative 1 half na additional, into these four blanks. Now, you have to place it here in proper order. And your only clue or the question is this image no a hydrogen and then where is the electron so can you solve it if not no, that's okay we'll get back to this one later now because it's a bit difficult even for the kachimek without the background knowledge so let me introduce to you now the quantum numbers no, again as i mentioned we'll go deeper in the things that we cannot see in the quantum world no, so for this session we are to describe the quantum mechanical model of the atom. Though, I've already discussed this last time no, in the history of modern atomic theory, we'll try to get a glimpse in case you already forgot. And we'll try to describe the electronic structure of atoms in terms of main energy levels, sublevels, and orbitals, and relate this to the energy. And don't get uh, frightened by these terms. Now, these are too technical, but let's see now, if, if they are really difficult or madali lang naman pala siya. And third is to use quantum numbers to describe an electron in an atom and then perform exercises on quantum numbers. No, as usual, no, uh, a knowledge has no value until we put it into practice. So are you ready? Mahashimek? My 
my favorite world world favorite word is all right so let's get it on no? so before we discuss no what are these quantum numbers are let's go deeper again once again in the atomic structure no or what an atom looks like in our elementary days we have already learned no that uh, or in high school probably that the electron proton and neutron are the basic components or the subatomic particles no and then i eventually discussed in uh, last sem the quarks no though the different quarks no though we didn't tackle the leptons and other uh, other the barons the other uh, elementary particles no because uh, if you'll uh, study further the subatomic particles can still be divided into what we call the electron uh, the elementary particles no? these are being discovered in the large hadron colliders no or in a laboratory where they uh yeah and hit protons with protons neutrons with protons neutrons with neutrons no? until they break because they saw that protons and neutrons are relatively bigger than the electrons so maybe we can still divide them into smaller smaller things or smaller stuff which we eventually called elementary particles so yeah and, uh, i've already discussed the history of the atomic timeline and how amazing the process was no, or the process were in discovering and creating these different theories these different models so i'll be putting the link on the description below in case you missed watching this wonderful uh discovery by this few people though though i i, I mentioned there that these people no, are not the sole researcher no? these are highlighted however there are a lot of uh step by step procedure there are unsung heroes you know there are people that have not been mentioned but yeah it's a long long process no, of of uh discovery you know, of development so to highlight for our particular topic i'd like to highlight niels bohr model now so uh one of the reason why i say this is amazing because uh, it, st it started with Democritus and Leosippus, and unfortunately, hindi sikat sila. So, natalo ni Aristotle, famous si Aristotle. So, yung opinion niya, yung tweet niya, yung post niya, mas pinakinggan kasi sikat siya. Kesa doon sa may uh, mas intellectual or probably at that some point, uh, siya yung merong knowledge, no? merong evidence, no? merong uh, concrete, merong concrete data, merong uh, empirical evidence to support his claim kaso mas famous sa kanya yung isa so yung blabberish yung blah 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 niya ni Aristotle yun yung pinakinggan until Dalton no uh, supported Democritus Democritus was so happy Thomson improved Dalton di ba okay lang sabi ko mga opya basta he improved mo no paraphrasing with improvement uh, Thomson copy Dalton's idea with some improvement and Thomson has two good students, no? That's why I I really appreciate students who are questioning, who are so eager, because uh, seemingly they, these are random people, that they are, but they are all connected. Rutherford was the student of Thomson. Bohr was another student of Thomson. Also, no? basically they are classmates. Rutherford's uh, apprentice was Chadwick. No? So they keep on improving and improving until the modern atomic theory timeline. And as I mentioned also in the video, this is not yet the end. Now, maybe the modern atomic theory is wrong. So we'll like, I'd like to focus on Bohr's model and the modern atomic model. Why is that? Because in high school, no, even up to now, this is the model that is being used. Because it's much easier to understand and it helps a lot no, in understanding the movements or the behavior of the subatomic particle, specifically the electron. So let me reiterate. Uh, according to Niels Bohr, no, the electrons are moving like planets no, around the nucleus, which is like the sun. No? So that's why it was called the planetary model. And again, uh, very magnificent ito because the, the role of science is to create a single theory, a unified theory to a grand theory that would... Uh, have a unified law from the microscopic world to the macroscopic world meaning 
a uh, theory for everything you know, yung ina ano ni Stephen Hawking so imagine small scale are also happening in the solar system microscopic macroscopic would that be uh, uh, amazing no? and yes it's really amazing until such time that it was, it was eventually changed no because if the electrons are moving like planets meaning we can predict their motion However, according to the modern scientists no, or the modern model, we cannot no, determine the exact position of an electron at a given time. What do we mean by that? No, again, uh, I'll highlight this one because there were three people responsible for uh, debunking the planetary model no, or rejecting Bohr's model. No, it was Erwin Schrödinger. Maybe these are uh, familiar names, no? Louis de Broglie and then Werner Heisenberg. No? Maybe Schrodinger and Heisenberg are uh, more familiar, no? Because even to me, Bro Broglie doesn't really ring a bell no? until I've read his works. Now, these are the pioneers for the modern atomic theory. So, uh, what did they propose? No? To summarize, what they discovered, uh, Bohr's model will tell you that the electrons are moving in orbits, no, just like planets. So it's moving here, no, following a path, no, a circular path around the nucleus, being attracted with a certain radius. Radius, but quantum model states that, no, the uh, the electrons does not move in this particular path, but rather it moves around, no unknowingly and unconsciously and uh, we cannot identify its exact position no uh, it's the heisenberg uncertainty principle no? we cannot determine where the electron is no where the electron are uh, and coupled with broglie and schrodinger's wave function no? that the electron cannot be considered as particle no? it, it it behaves like wave so ang sabi lang naman ni quantum mechanical model of atom uh, si electron instead of moving in this particular orbit it moves in an orbital no or within an orbital such that this circular path is just the boundary or the region of space where the electron can be found no it's just a location uh, how can i say this one no if if Bohr model could be the exact address. Salimba, Sir Jello lives at 400, uh, number household 400, zone 6, Porok dos. The quantum mechanical model is saying, that's wrong. No, you cannot really tell, if I'm the electron, the exact position of Sir Jello, of that electron. But, I can say, and I am sure, that Sir Jello is living in Porok dos, no? or in that sitio. Because he's constantly moving. So, it, it's seemingly mind-boggling. Why cannot we determine the exact address no, or exact position? What's the reason behind that? Why is it impossible in the first place to do that? Now, here's the reason why. Now, so, bear with me as we dwell into the quantum world. Now, uh, and I want you to bring your imagination with me. So, first question, what is it that enables us to see things? No. First is, of course, the light. No, probably coming from the sun or the source of light, or the ring light, or any kind of light, the flashlight, or any kind of light. Second, of course, is your eyes. No, either with an eyeglass, a telescope, microscope. Well, these are just instrument. You need your pair of eyes to process things. So again, light and a pair of eyes. Now the light is consists of photons. So eto mga photons. So, in order, now if we would theoretically have an experiment that we can see this light, now if a photon hits the electron, kailangan mag-bounce back ni photon pabalik sa mata natin para makita natin, ah, and zan. So, alimbawa, ito, this is my favorite perfume, I rock bench, I endorse. Para makita ko siya, the light would hit this one and mag-bounce back siya sa mata ko. So, magbabounce back sa mata ko. Ching! Nakikita ko na siya. However, 
electron being as small as photons or even smaller, once the photon hits the electron, the electron will eventually move. So, bago pa makabalik sa mata ko yung message, kasi photon is a flash drive of information. I'd like to call it a flash drive of information. Kasi it contains the information that I need. Wala na siya dito sa position. No? Uh, nagiget ba? Wala na siya dito. It's in another position. That's why we also call it a superposition of electron. So, it can be at the same time. Uh, it can it, it can be at two different places at the same time. So, kapag may photo naman na tumama, tatama sa mata ko, wala na siya dito because it was pushed, no? Or there's a transfer of kinetic energy. I don't know if you're getting this, pero, uh, yan, kung, no, kung hindi, ulitin nyo lang because this it's really amazing no it gives us a lot of uh, possibilities you know that in the quantum world past present future does not occur no it 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 disobeys the logic of the universe no it's, it's really amazing but it's in higher physics so we'll dwell in chemistry i just gave you an idea of why is it that electron is so magnificent that we we place them in a region where we cannot see them no we we call this the electron cloud model now we know that the electron must be here now but we don't know its exact position so if i tell you that it's here now i would be wrong because again my eyes would be deceived by the late photon no the photon traveled tapos may delay pa yan sa my my eyes processing the information that i've received now, wala na lang dyan si electron Nandito na siya, and I, I'll be seeing multiple electrons no, if that's the case. So, ginawa na lang siyang blurred no, or a cloud. Meaning, uh, this is the orbital. I know the electron must be there. I, don't, I just don't know the exact position. So, that's the modern atomic theory model. No? And that's how the electron behaves. Now, if that's the case, how are we going to identify no, or to locate the position of the electrons. The, the first answer there is, of course, we cannot locate the exact position, but we can find the region of space where the electron might possibly be through the set of quantum numbers.